could we possibly use information as fuel to power an engine? Well, before we can answer that question, we need to understand how to measure information. How do you measure it? What are the units? Hmm. Maybe books, pages, libraries? Suppose we had a 10-sided die with the numbers 0 through 9. We need to tell which one was the outcome from rolling it. How many digits do we need to tell which one? Well, to me, that seems pretty easy. It's just going to be one digit because it's going to be a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, right? And that's one digit. <laughs> What if we had a hundred-sided die? Ooh, just a little harder. But I think I could do it in two digits, because I could uh, encode any number between 0 and 99 in two digits. In general, for n outcomes, we'd need log base 10 of n digits. What if we were to do yes-no questions instead? You probably played this game in the car. How many questions would we need to find out which number turned up on an eight-sided die having the numbers 0 through 7? And what would make the best sense to ask? Well, you know, I'd kind of like to suggest that we ask, is it in 4, 5, 6, or 7? The reason I'd like to do that is I'm splitting the set in half with the first question. And so if the person says yes, I know it's in 4, 5, 6, or 7. If he says no, I know it's in one, 0, 1, 2, or 3. And so I have just cut my number of possibilities in half. You could repeat this process again. Suppose he said it was in 4, 5, 6, or 7, and you'd ask, OK, well, is it in 6 or 7? And he'd say maybe yes. And so then you'd ask, is it 7? And if he said yes, you'd know the answer was 7, obviously, right? <laughs> In general, for n possibilities, we need to ask b questions, where b is log base 2 of n. Binary digits are called bits. You could ask three questions and encode yes as a 1 and no as a 0. Then the answer would be encoded as binary digits. In other words, if you think about the last problem we just did and the answers were yes, 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 then the answer would be 111, which, by the way, is binary uh, representation of the number 7. So there's one binary digit uh, or bit of information per yes-no question. And essentially, bits and digits are just different units of information, just like pages and books. And that's because of this logarithmic identity. Log base 2 of x would give you the binary uh, number of binary digits for x possibilities. And it's equal to log base two, uh, 10 of 2 of x divided by log base 10 of 2. And uh, the log base 10 of x is the number of digits you'd need for x possibilities. And log base 10 of 2, 1 over that, is the conversion factor between one and the other digits and bits. What do logarithms really mean? Well, to me, logarithms tell you the number of digits in the base of the logarithm needed to select from uh, n possibilities. So, for example, log base 10 of 100 possibilities is two digits. Log base 2 of n is b bits. Logarithms are a measure of the information you need to know if you need to distinguish between uh, n possibilities. Knowing one bit of information cuts your possible outcomes in half. So let's think about the engine now. Suppose we had a pipe with pistons on both ends and one particle of gas inside. Here's a picture. How could we use the information, or some kind of information, to do work on this? Well, hmm, suppose we knew which half of the pipe the particle was in. 
And then, if we knew which half of the pipe the particle was in, we could quickly slip the piston on the other half halfway in. Thereby, we reduced the volume by a factor of two, and uh, we did that without opposition because the particle was in the other half of the uh, box, and so there was nothing opposing us when we pushed it in. So, you know, if you remember the ideal gas law from the last video I did, this basically tells you that we just raised the temperature. And so now we have more energy inside the pipe than we did before, which uh, we could then use to do work. So, uh, you know, uh, you might think this is a pretty weird thing, but it actually uh, came about from uh, Leo Zillard. He was the uh, physicist who actually invented the atomic bomb and the nuclear reactor, and he patented them. And uh, he also invented this engine. Now, could I have just, you know, kind of, uh, I mean, you know, is this really possible? Well, in 2010, these guys here demonstrated that uh, uh, they actually made a real uh, um, Zillard-type engine. So I'd like to talk for a little bit here just uh, how does this relate to entropy. And you kind of need to understand a little thing about thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is uh, basically the study of the macroscopic view of a system and essentially an equilibrium. Um, the system also has a microscopic state. In other words, inside the uh, pipe there's all these uh, particles bouncing around and each particle has um, some position, momentum, energy, uh, and um, each of those has uh, possible states um, that it could be in. Uh, you know, quantum mechanics says that those states are, uh, are uh, distinct. They're not continuous. They're uh, discrete. So anyway, um, you're, you're missing some information uh, when you look at things from a thermodynamic perspective. You only know the state of the system, like the um, pressure, volume, temperature, um, entropy, and things like that. So the amount of, of uh, data you're uh, missing is essentially, you know, uh, the number of microscopic states. Uh, and or you need to, you know, know what each one of those microscopic states is. Uh, so you, you're missing that many possibilities. You don't know which one out of all those possibilities it is. So uh, Ludwig Boltzmann um, uh, showed that the entropy that was discovered by Rudolf Clausius uh, decades before he did this uh, was equal to uh, K sub B, which is, is Boltzmann's constant. It's essentially a units conversion, times the log, uh, you know, this is the natural log, of omega, where omega is actually the number of uh, states that uh, you could possibly have, uh, the ones you don't know. So essentially, now that you know that a log of the number of possibilities is really the information, essentially uh, the entropy is the information you're missing from, uh, from uh, you know, just knowing the thermodynamic variables and not the micro uh, state. And actually, Zillard's engine is uh, going to give you... Uh, um, uh, you know, it's going to work based on knowing the microstate of that system. And so, essentially, you're reducing entropy by a factor of, uh, you know, uh, log uh, of, uh, you know, well, by one bit, essentially.